This is where progressivism is a demonic lie. God doesn't need to improve his message because he got it right the first time. Unlike those of us who think that there needs to be progress, there doesn't need to be progress, there needs to be obedience to perfection, and that is the word of God. And so the theme here, contending, it is a military word. One Bible commentary says it this way, and I quote, in the original Greek language, the word contend was used to describe a general giving orders to the army, hence the atmosphere of this letter is military. It's combat language. Contend, it's a fight. And the point is this, the church doesn't pick the fight, but we will have the fight. And the world can believe whatever it wants to believe, but the church believes some things that are quite different. The world can follow the spirit of the age, but we will follow the spirit of God. This is the house of the Lord. You are the people of the Lord. This place belongs exclusively to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we are exclusively under the authority of his word. Now others may not believe that, but that's who we are and that's what we believe. And there is a battle to be had for the church to remain pure in an age of confusion and compromise. Now, a couple of things I wanna say about this contending. People don't change the gospel. The gospel changes people. And the gospel is the good news of the message that we are sinners and that Jesus Christ is our savior. And so ultimately for us, we assume that when we disagree with the word of God, we do not change the word of God. We invite the spirit of God to change us, to conform to the word of God. That's what we believe. Number two, when you come into church, you're going to worship. When you're leaving the church, you're going to war. The backdrop here for Jude, spiritual warfare. And then number three, Christians are to fight, not because we hate people, but because we love people. And we hate the demonic forces that have taken them captive to destroy them. Jesus says, I came to set captives free. The Bible says that our war is not against flesh and blood, but powers, principalities, and spirits. What it's saying is we don't hate people, we love people, and we hate those spirits who oppress and confuse and lie to and destroy people whom God loves. So to tell people that they are a sinner is not being unloving, it's actually the most loving. Let me say this, if you're here and you're, you're not a Christian, you're the biggest problem in your life. You are. You're the greatest enemy you have, okay? How do I know that? There's been a lot of people that have hurt you, but they've come and gone. You're the only constant variable. You need to know that you are the problem, not the solution. You need to know that you are the one to be delivered, not the one who is the savior doing the delivering. And we don't tell people that they are sinners and need a savior because we hate them, but because we love them, because they're sinners and they need a savior. Here's my question to you. If Christians are called to contend, where's your war? Where's your war? And as God's people, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For some of you, I want you to read Jude thinking in terms of where your front line of this battle is. For some of you, it's at your house. You're married to an unbeliever. You're like, I'm trying to love Jesus. My spouse doesn't. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to bring the presence of God into a place where, where my spouse doesn't want to be in God's presence. For some of you, it's with your children. They've gone apostate. They become confused. Maybe they have trauma. Maybe they have gender dysphoria and sexual confusion. And maybe you're struggling to, to love them and to lead them into the fullness that God has for them. And that's where your war is. For some of you, it's technology and it's social media and it's friends that seem to be just invading your home and educating and brainwashing your children, which happens first and foremost at the government schools. They're not public schools, they're government schools. And for some of you, your place of war, the front line of your battle, it's at work. You show up and everything they're telling you in your training on how to be a good employee makes you a bad Christian. You gotta figure out people's pronouns and identities and tolerance and diversity and everybody's welcome except for Jesus and everything's welcome except for the Bible. You're trying to figure out how to not lose your job and not dishonor your Lord. 
For some of you, you're university students and every day you go to campus, you're just walking into enemy territory. You know that if you tell them what you believe, you're going to get a worse grade. You know you're not gonna get a promotion at work if you really do come out of the closet as a true believer in Jesus Christ. That's the only closet that everyone's supposed to stay in, apparently. <laughs> Many of you are sensing this and now the war has come everywhere. Walk into Target, walk out of Target. You know, you know it's everywhere. Where's your war? As you read Jude, think of it as orders from headquarters. Think of it as God himself, as commander in chief, giving you clear directives how to fight the good fight of faith, how to endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, how to contend for the faith. Thanks for joining me. My name is Pastor Mark. I've been teaching the Bible for more than three decades and head on constant collisions with woke culture. And I would love to get you more Bible teaching. Two things you can do, go ahead and watch the sermon in total and also subscribe to the channel. And I'll just keep sending you Bible teaching and we'll have a lot more fun together.